Hello and welcome. Today we're going to restore the brakes on my E34 from this old crusty mess to this shiny treasure. We're going to start at the front because at the rear I'm still waiting on discs and pads. So let's get the car up in the air and the wheels off. Now you can really see the terrible condition of the calipers. The brakes are still good, pads are nice and thick, they were renewed, but the caliper itself is completely rotten and rusty and I want to refinish these to a beautiful silver. The main reason I'm doing this is because the rear caliper is stuck and completely ate the new rotor and pad, but I also really dislike the old crusty calipers, I prefer them in a nice OEM looking shiny color. And I've bought some new brake lines, so I already checked and this one is right from the length, so we're good to go. And these are already really stiff and I think I can see some first signs of dry rotting, which would not be good. So these will need to be changed. I always use one of these clamps to loosen the brake caliper from the rotor a bit. And this is just the same as the specialist tools. Just don't forget to open the reservoir cap. Now I'm gonna cut through the line. Now I can loosen the two main 19 millimeter bolts. Calipers out. I'm gonna soak the top part of the brake line for a few days before taking it off. I really don't want to mess up the nut. Upon closer inspection, I can see no signs of dry rotting, so this would have been okay to reuse, but since I'm already in there, I'm just gonna replace it. Even though not new, still plenty of life left. First I took the wire wheel to it and then loosened all the hard rust. Now I'm going to take out all the small rust with the rust loosener and then we can proceed with the painting. After having ground off most of the rust, I'm now going to take apart the brake caliper. This is really easy. First of all, we're going to let the piston jump out, so I'm just going to take a block of wood so it doesn't smash against metal. Take the compressor, just chuck it in there. Boom, it's already out. Block of wood is too thick for the last part, so I'm going to use a towel. Boom, now it's completely out. old crusty seal that was starting to disintegrate. You can just take needle nose pliers and then try to get the sliding pin out. Easy as that. And then you can take the correct size wrench to take off the bleed nipple. On this one, it's a bit weird, it's a size seven. If it strips off, I'm just gonna use some vice grips. Managed to get it off with these. Unfortunately, I noticed that my parts supplier ordered me the wrong kit because I specifically asked for 60mm because I went online with my VIN 
and then I checked what kind of brakes my car has and it said 60 millimeter and they delivered me a 54 millimeter kit which is incorrect so I'll have to send these back and then get the correct size. I checked the brakes in the rear and the kit I got for the rear is correct so unfortunately this will have to sit for a few days while the new parts are coming in. And now the same procedure just in the rear. On the rear I unfortunately couldn't save the two calipers. On one side the piston literally broke while I tried prying it out and on the other side the bleeder nipple was so rusted in there that even after welding on several nuts I couldn't get it out. My rescue mission was stopped while trying to extract it with an extractor bit that broke off in there and you can't drill through extractor bits so I had to buy new calipers for both sides. So this is the old product and this is the new one. I bought them both in the local hardware store and uh, with this one I'm not really satisfied at all. I hope this one is better. So yeah, this is a concentrate and unfortunately they just had one liter left so I'll have to work with that. I'm gonna check in two days if they have some more in stock then. But yeah, for now I'm just gonna dip these into this bucket and then give it a bit of distilled water to thin it down. I've now also ground off most of the heavy rust from the rear caliper bracket and now I'm going to dip that in the solution as well. I can see it bubbling under the... Oh, damn! This is reacting fast. Whew. Now that all the ground off parts are in there, I'm just going to let the solution do its magic and then hope for the best within 24 hours. This is what the parts look like right now. I've just taken them out of the bath and yeah, pretty much 90%, 95% of the rust is gone. Now I can paint them in a nice silver color. I've taped off the two main mating surfaces and now it's ready for the first coat. Brake paint, obviously. So this is the caliper that was really crusty at the front. Around 30 hours into the bath and a bit of manual cleaning. I think it cleaned up fairly well. I'm not going to chase perfection with this one. There's still a few tiny rust spots. But since brake paint is really, really hard, I think it's just going to like stay under there and it's not going to brittle away. So yeah, this will be good for another 20 years or so. Now we're going to continue at the rear. If we go closer, we can clearly see and hear that this was definitely metal to metal contact. The pads completely used up the rotor and it is a huge lip. It's not even funny anymore. Unfortunately, the brake line bolts are so corroded, it's going to be really hard to get them off. So I'm going to loosen the rust with metal brushes and then use some fast acting rust loosener in hopes that this helps a tiny bit. I'm sorry, but there really is no good way to film this. I don't have a lift, I can't position the camera well, so I'm gonna use a 14 mil wrench to hold the flexi part of the hose, and then I'm gonna use these hose pliers to undo the brake line nut, because these are so corroded if I were to put on a normal like 10 mm wrench, 11 mm wrench, it would instantly strip and I don't have a set of special flared wrenches for brake lines so I always do it with this. In the future I really have to invest in specialist equipment. And then I grip it as hard as I can with my two hands, really squeeze it tight and then start turning. Usually I also pull on this as you can see, this nut completely stripped. Unfortunately, I have to reuse it because the Amazon seller that sold me the brake lines 
yeah, they gave me the wrong fitting, so I have to reuse this nut on this end, and then on the other I can use the provided nut. And that's why I always hate doing brake jobs, because if you want to replace the flexi brake lines on old cars, it's always destroyed and always rusty, because engineers have no brain apparently, and design their stuff so that the smallest bolts always get the most amount of crud, salt and water, and everybody that works on a car that is 10 years or older, has to do the same shit over and over and it always goes wrong. And my camera is retarded as well, so it doesn't focus right, my bad. And that was how you flare one brake line. This is horrible and I hate doing it. Do not forget to put the nut on before you do it because otherwise you're gonna regret it. Uh, I hate doing brake lines and as good willing and stupid as I am, I thought there was only stuff on Amazon that had the DIN standard. Uh, yeah, this is garbage and it uses a double inverted flare or whatever it's called and not the DIN standards that is common on European cars. So this is not the correct way to do it, but as I'm a bit in a rush, I'm still gonna use this. And um, yeah, we might do the whole brake lines in the future. And even if I personally don't do it, the next person definitely has to do it because we're now in a part of the car's life where everything is just falling apart and brake lines start to corrode. So they will probably have to be replaced in the future. I managed to take off the nut after heating the flexi brake hose multiple times because on the car you can't really do that because there's a lot of stuff in the way. There's plastic that you can burn, there's dampers that you can overheat. Like, I wouldn't do it because it's kind of risky, but outside you can really do as much as you want. But yeah, uh, now that I've gotten the nut off, I can just slide it over the brake line and then do a normal fitting with that. Also, don't forget to put it on correctly and don't forget the first one. Now that the line is finished, we can bend it to the correct form. On this end, I managed to get a normal double flat thing for the adapter. And here I managed to get a normal flare for the normal brake fittings. I have now bent the brake line to a correct form. You can use one of these budget tools. This one does the job fine. You will have to do some adjustment with your fingers later on because it doesn't do the job perfectly. But uh, as an amateur, this is okay, I guess. Now we're gonna loosen the rotor with the rotor tightening screw. I'm just gonna give it the beans with the torch because these are usually really rusty. Now that the screw has been massaged, we can remove it. Came out without issues. Nice. I've just loosened the handbrake and now we can take off the rusty crusty rotor without uh, burning ourselves to death. The handbrake shoes are in really bad condition. These are most likely still their original ones. They are still intact on this side. I've done the other side off camera. And on the other side, the top part broke in half right here. So there was only metal and the bottom part was still almost intact. But on both sides, there were heavy cracks in all of them. And they were definitely at the end of their lives. As always with handbrakes, it's really easy to do them. I'm just joking, the springs are an absolute horror to get off, but the overall functioning of the handbrake is fairly simple. Now that the handbrake adjustment is fully loosened, we can take off this spring first and then take out the adjuster. Then I always take out the two retaining pins and then we can take out the side that is actually connected to the handbrake in the cabin. That went easy, actually, kind of surprised. Now I take out the adjuster. Now I'm gonna take out the spring retainers. You just have to get your connector in and then push it in, turn half a turn, and then they usually jump out by themselves, pretty much. 
There is a lever right here that opens and closes when you pull in the cabin. And I usually just try to push this over so that I can get to the spring easier. And then you can try to remove the bottom spring. And easy as that. That's how I dismantle the parking brake. I also recommend picking up a new brake shield once you're in there, change the two springs and get the retainers new. These usually come in a kit that doesn't even cost five bucks, so it's really easy to do it when you're in there. Uh, the brake shield is kind of hard to get off because usually you don't have enough space to take it off without removing the wheel bearing. We won't be doing that right now, so I'll just install a new handbrake and then we're good. You can definitely see some heavy pitting on the old brake pads, these were definitely on the way out. Also, on the adjuster, I usually pick it out and then just apply some new grease so that it slides smoothly. I've already pre-tensioned the adjuster and now we're going to put on a new brake disc. I have no new bolt with the kit, so I've put a bit of copper grease on the old one so that it doesn't stick again. I've now disengaged the gearbox and put up the handbrake to around 5-6 clicks. And now I already have some resistance on there, so it's kind of good how we did it. We're going to check the final setting. I always drive up on a steep hill and then I checked to have the car standing and not rolling without the gearbox engaged at around five to six clicks so that it grabs nicely even on two to three clicks. Now I'm going to reinstall the caliper bracket. On E34s the rear caliper brackets are taught to 65 newton meters. Now I'm going to prep the caliper for installation. I've put Copper grease on the bleeder nipple so that these don't rust and I also always put copper grease on the thread for the brake line because if somebody after you goes in there and it's rusty it's gonna have a bad time. And now comes the part that has the BMW community split, the sliding pins. I always grease them up because in my opinion it just makes the caliper slide easier and promotes a smoother braking experience. But do whatever you like. Right there. The sliding pins get 28 newtons. Don't forget the two caps. The new retaining clip. You can't tell me that this does not look nice. I love the look of refurbished brakes. So shiny. Before we can bleed the whole system, we also need to clean the reservoir once because honestly it is kind of shocking how much crud is in there. There's literally black sediment in there and that needs to be cleaned ASAP because we cannot really like put new fluid in without addressing this. To take it out, I'm just gonna rip it off even if that is a bit uh, brutal. But yeah, it's only held in by two rubber grommets, so we shouldn't break anything. It's going to take off the top sensor, which we're also going to clean to get all the nasty crud off. As you can see, the reservoir really is disgusting inside and out. And um, I'm just going to empty a bit of the fluid so that you can see. Like, this looks like old diesel oil. I'm not even joking when I say I literally think the last time this has been done is over 10 years ago. This brake fluid should never be black. There's black sediments in there. It is really, really disgusting. And even the bleeder screws were so stuck that this has definitely not been done for the last 10 years. So that was definitely overdue. But yeah, now we're going to clean this thing. To do this, I'm going to use my ultrasonic cleaner. I've put in some regular cleaning solution since normal ultrasonic cleaners are caustic and that is no bueno for the plastic so we're gonna let that thing do its magic with just some normal floor cleaner. Now everything is clean again inside and outside. I've specifically made sure 
that there is no fluid in there. In case you didn't know, brake fluid is hygroscopic, so it attracts water and quickly bonds to it. And we do not want water in our fresh new brake fluid. I've also bought one of these fancy brake bleeders since I do this more or less regularly. Now we're going to test it. As you can see, I've checked the carb at the point which is furthest from the reservoir, so the right rear, and now I'm going to pressurize the reservoir at the front, and it's already bleeding out at the back, which is good. Now we're going to keep going until there's no air coming out. No more air bubbles, so I'm going to close the nipple. Now that you've drenched yourself in brake fluid, make sure to clean off everything since brake fluid is really aggressive. So, after bleeding everything, you need to take out as much fluid until you reach the max level on the reservoir. I've already done that. The old fluid was more like used engine oil and I've already put most of it in here. But yeah, this is a complete brake rebuild on the E34. The car should now brake a lot better and in case there are any issues with the lines, I'll gladly redo a video and do it correctly because you really shouldn't like mess around with the brake system until it's 100% safe. So yeah. Unfortunately, I also have issues with the MK2. I did a poll on my community tab and I blew the engine. It's already disassembled. This is more of like a personal project, so I don't know if I should document it or not. Please tell me down in the comments. Taken off the head, everything, and the hat gasket blew from cylinder one to four. Like, it's completely gone, like literally. That explains why I had only 0.5 bar compression in these two cylinders. Here it started to disintegrate as well, so that's why the third had lower compression, and the fourth cylinder had pretty much full compression. I already changed the hat gasket, so it's no longer the 40 year old original unit. When I first ordered the parts, before I started my YouTube channel for this car, I didn't really pay attention and I chose the thickest hat gasket, even though there was no machining done to the head. So maybe that contributed to the failure we had now. The head should be straight, it has never been overheated in its entire life. This has been a family only car since new, so it has never been overheated and I can be sure that that was never the case. So the head should be completely straight. I don't know if I should just slap on a new hat gasket and call it a day and maybe risk having the same failure again in 10,000 kilometers, or I'm going to take out the whole engine and do a full rebuild. I don't really know what I'm going to do yet, so if you have any suggestions, just leave it down below. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I've put a lot of effort in this, and even though I don't think it's like 100% perfect, I still think everything except the failed brake lines went relatively smooth. I'm going to check if everything works. If yes, the next video will definitely be a driving video, I promise. But if I have leaking brake fluid, I'm not going to drive the car, that's just too dangerous. I'm just going to redo the brake lines in one piece and then we're safe. So, thank you so much for watching and I wish you all a really nice day.